For a lot of us, the cold, dark winter months are here, and sadly, that can mean less riding time. But don't worry, it doesn't mean a drop in performance. No, today, I've got some great gym workouts that we're gonna go through and show you to keep you riding good. Right, it's not all about me today, then. No, I have drafted in good friend, cyclist, and bodybuilding extraordinaire back in the day. Carl can stand here. Oh, Stanza Fitness. Mate, thank you for having us. My pleasure. Now, before we start lifting weights, yep. we've got to get warmed up, right? Absolutely, 100%. It's key. So, to the floor. Right, guys, so what we're going to do, first of all, is just a dynamic stretch. <laughs> so, we're going to do world's greatest stretch, which will be us going down to the floor into a tall plank position. We want to stack our shoulders over the tops of our wrists, bring a leg up to the front, and then we're just going to drop down towards the floor and then rotate up to the ceiling. We're just going to repeat this for 10 on each side and then just mirror it by switching over legs, push your hips towards the floor, changing arms, and then a little wave to Rich over there and then back through. Right. Rich, let's see what you've got. So go on, show me again. Okay, so more. into position, tall plank first of all, that's your starting place. Oh, I remember Bring your the leg one. up to the side. Try to push your hips towards the floor. That helps you get that stretch inside. And then we're going the through, innit? And that's we're going to go one. down. Up to the ceiling. Hi, Carl. Let's do it in time. Oh. Ready? Hi, Carl. Maximum points. <sighs> Lovely. Oh, it's a good one, Carl. Yeah, that's why it's the world's greatest stretch. Oh, it's a good one. And once you've done that, we just want to then switch it over and just bring the other leg up and then just come under. Oh, we could almost hold hands. Up to the top. Come wow. on, stretch. <laughs> come on. Oh, so close. <laughs> and obviously, stretching is hugely important, right? If Absolutely. you go straight into doing these weights without warming up, yeah. we you're going to... We want to look for doing a dynamic stretch, which is where you've got movement involved. You want to stay away from doing a static stretch. This is giving you an opportunity to warm up, open the body up, and just get engaged <laughs> with your body for before you do the next movements. Right, we're just going to go down to the floor and do the iron cross. So, iron lying down cross. on your back, I want you to keep your shoulders in contact with the ground and put your knees together and we're just going to rotate over to the floor, to the middle, to the floor. And when you're doing this, as you're rotating over, you just want to keep your shoulders pinned down, up to the middle and then back over. And core tight, right? You want Absolutely. Your back shouldn't have an arch in it or nothing. You, well, you may get slight flex in it. We're not trying to keep our back... Per we're, what we're trying to do is twist this way. We're right. trying to move our body in different directions to prepare it for exercise. Okay. So by doing this, it's actually an, an occasion where we don't mind having a little bit of mm. movement with a no. twist. So with this, you just want to look to get 10, five on each side, oh, okay. and then job done. Lovely, okay. To warm up the lower body, we're just going to do some single glute bridges. So we're going to come leg up, just pop up. I just want you to do 10 of these on each leg. This is the working leg, the one that's on the floor. We're just going to drive our hips up to the ceiling, control back down, 10 on one side. And then you're just going to drop the other leg down, bring the other leg up, and then drive the hips again up to the ceiling. Just trying to get your lower body nice and warmed up for the exercises to come. Okay, Carl, yes. the warm-up is done, crucially important. So that can be done at home or at the gym. So if you are going to do these following workouts that we're going to do, a lot of them can be done at home with different variations. So you can still do these warm-ups at home. But first things first, let's kick things off with a classic, the squat. To That's the squat a good rack. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Over to the squat rack, please, Rich. All right, Carl, tell me why this one's so good. Okay, so Rich is going to be doing a squat. This is a staple for most mountain bikers for lower body strength. And that's it. We want to build strength up in the legs, which will help generate power and help you get more speed out of the bike. It's also going to help with your riding position when you're stacked over the top of the bike. Your legs are one of the key contact points. As you can see with Rich here, he's got the bar nicely pulled into his traps on the fleshy part of his neck. Duh. He's keeping his elbows pulled down. And with a depth, this is slightly different for everybody, but he's aiming to try getting his thighs parallel with the floor. Everyone's going to be slightly different, but that's a good rule of thumb. As you come up, you want to keep soft knees. You don't um, want to be like... With this, yeah, we're trying to basically pull our knees away like that and then sit our body in between our thighs. That will then create tension in the glutes 
and also stabilize the pelvis and help you with a nice strong movement as you descend and then as you push the floor away you'll go up and you won't get this caving in of the knees so just try to think as you're going down you're pulling your knees away ever so slightly and dropping down but that's tidy what you're doing there and it's a good tempo tempo wise one two three one two three and that'll help with your speed as well when you're going up and down bang it well from that let's move on to the deadlift shall we this is another big one So the difference between a squat and a deadlift is the squat is an up and down movement and the deadlift is a hinging movement where your hips are going to the back of the room and then pushing forwards. What we quite often see when people are deadlifting is that they squat down to the bar, the knees go over the top of the bar and it makes it quite an awkward movement. Okay. So with this, what you want to do is as you have the bar, step up to the bar, have your shins close. Put your feet a distance where you would jump in the air as high as you can do. So if I was jumping in the air, I'm standing about here because that will give me the most amount of power to go up. Gotcha. So if you're too wide, it's going to have a negative effect. So looking at my stance, nice and narrow there. Slight bend in the knees and then I'm just going to push my hips to the back of the room as my chest then goes down to the floor. As you can see here, I'm quite far away from the bar. So then I've just got to drop from my knees a couple of inches and then I'm in the position. From here, what I want to do is bend the bar so that tightens my upper back and then I'm just going to push the floor away and then snap my hips forwards. And if you watch this, a lot of the movement is coming from the hips, going back and forwards and then just a small movement from the knees. Not a movement where I go down to the bar here and then squat it up and down like that. That's an uh, incredible That's what I was guilty of, right? You were guilty. No, okay, right. So get a bit Shins closer. to the bar. Shins to the bar, so that's the centre of gravity. Keep the bar over the top of the yep. knot in your shoelaces. Hinged over. Get your arms a little bit closer so they're just on the outside of your thighs. Gotcha. Lovely. And that's it from there. You'll push your hips forwards and chest comes up. Much better, mate. Well done. Lovely. Okay. And as you're at, when you're at the top, you just want to follow the same path back down. So your hips will go back, slight bend in the knees, to the floor, reset, and then up. And if you try to bend the bar, that's going to help create tension in this upper part of your back. Oh, I see, like pulling your shoulder so blades in. Here, if you've got the bar, imagine that you're rotating your elbows that way and tightens yeah. it. I mean, I could bend this back. bar if I wanted. You are so strong. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does scare me, actually. <laughs> okay. Lovely. That's much neater, mate. Not to have pulled you apart, but that was not no, a do you know, No, you know what, it's, it's, it's fair. And again, we should say, like, the whole knocky knees thing, you want to be careful, you like, your knees yeah, don't absolutely. bow in, right? absolutely. I mean, the stance is really important. When we're here, we're trying to start from the bottom with the squat and the deadlift. Start from the bottom, solid tree trunk, and then work your way up. So, starting from the feet, you're just trying to get nice and planted, spread your toes out into your shoes, into the floor if you're barefoot. And then, as we're here, we're working up the body, like I say, by getting nice and tight. You don't want to just come up to the bar, just be all loose and not have tension throughout your body and just rip it up because something's going to happen and yeah, it's going to likely it be out, an whatever. injury. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay, nice. And these obviously two, first two, you know, exercises here, great for the legs. Obviously, we all know that power and cycling and mountain biking is really important. Getting those sprints in and these two exercises, which can be adapted to be done at home. You know, you could yeah. do it with a weight in each hand or something like that. It's a little bit different, obviously, but... Yeah, I mean, I would say deadlifts as well. Although they do tap into a lot of lower body strength, there's also the posterior chain that they're working, which is the backside of my body. And when we're hinged over on a mountain bike, we're here. And on a long ride or when it's quite aggressive, this is tough on your back. So by doing these exercises, it's helping strengthen your posterior chain, this whole area here, to help you maintain good posture on a bike. So when you're getting a little bit loose and you're getting a bit tired, it helps you maintain a good position so that you can ride safely and fun. Nice. All right, well, let's rest the legs for a moment and do something on the upper body. Sounds good. Okay, Carl, next up, we're going to do bench press. So we're going to be working the old upper body. I'm going to rep away and you're going to wrap away. <laughs> Here we go. Smith. Right, let's watch. <laughs> okay, so bench press, now moving on to the upper body. This is hugely important for holding on to the bike, upper body strength. So when it's getting rough and ready, you can hold yourself into a nice position and hold on to the bars with confidence. Rich here's got nice, nice technique. He's gently going down with a one, two, three tempo and then back up with a one, two, three tempo, allowing a slight bend in the elbows so that we're not bringing the elbows up and coming too much into the shoulders and the traps. As he's coming down, the bar is coming just below his pec here and then driving it back up. Whoosh! 
Easy money. <laughs> what are the sort of, should we say, the pitfalls to look out for on that one, mate? What should right. people not be doing, yeah, should we say? Yeah, so can I just jump in there, because it's quite of course. easy to, sorry, it's easier to describe it. So when we're here, one of the pitfalls are that when people take the bar off the bench, they end up coming really high up their neck, and it's all in the shoulders, and then they complain when they're bench pressing, they get problems with their shoulders. So what I want you to do is, you try to bend the bar, similar to like you do with the deadlift, and then you just bring the bar just slightly below the chest there, and then right. back up. So it should be sort of just coming down towards your sternum, the basically. Part of your, yeah, the lower part of your pec just there. Okay. Also with this, feet. At the moment, I've got no stability in my lower body, so what I want to do is bring my feet underneath, get up onto my toes, and then just push myself up ever so slightly towards the back of the wall here where the bar is. Okay. And that will help give me stability with a slight arc in my back. This is the one occasion in the gym you can actually bend your back. It's right. actually not a bad thing. Okay, mate. So by doing this, this creates tension in your upper body, allows me to be nice and stable, and then push up yeah. with power. Right. You did well, mate. I've never seen you lift that much, I mean, so nice one. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Press-ups then, Carl. Not necessarily gym-specific, but really good for your upper body. I'm going to bash out a press-up, and then yep. we're going to do an advanced version, which actually you kind of need some apparatus for, not yep. necessarily from a gym, but you'll need something. So I'm going to do a press-up, you're going to tell us why. Yeah, let's go for it. This is very similar to the bench press, really. We're working on upper body strength and power. It's going to help with your stability and your posture when you're in position holding onto the mountain bike. So Rich is doing a lovely push-up here. Nice straight line from shoulders down to his feet. He's allowing his elbows as well to come at a 45 degree angle and just travel slightly backwards. Same as on the bench press, if you turn your elbows out like this and flare them up, you end up putting everything into the shoulders, into the traps. So, a lovely demonstrated push-up there, Rich. Nice, Very well, nice. let's take that to the next level yeah, then. So, absolutely. If you've got bench, uh, if you've got bench, if you've got press-ups in your arsenal already, let's make them harder. So what we've got here is a plyo push-up, so it just has an element of explosiveness in it, and we're going to use two plates. You can use Reebok decks, anything that can just be elevated just off the right. floor. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. So what we're going to get, get Rich to do is come down to the floor in the same position, and now what we're going to do is generate lots of speed from the bottom part of the movement, up, and then onto the uh, plates. Back down, and then up. So we've so the, got a nice slow movement on the way down, uh, and then okay. we're generating all the power on the way up. And this is just a progression for your push-ups. So that's me merely, so we're looking more here at that power on the way up. The, the, the way down is almost the rest part of the movement. It's, on the way down, you are working when you're under load. It's the eccentric part of it. But on the way up, we're just trying to generate lots of power as you're pushing yourself away from the floor. So creating okay, so, a bit of speed, so slowly down, and then fast up. Oh, that's, that's considerably it. harder. You have to kind of... Can I put them confidence with it? Can I put them a bit yourself. further apart? Yes, so you a bit can more, do. Yeah, you're, you're bigger than I am. A little more broad shoulders, should we say. Yeah. Okay, so we're here. And allow your elbows still to track back, the same as you did on your normal push-up. Okay, so slowly down. Slowly down, and then fast up. That's it, Rich. And then do you Love step it. back down? Yeah, you can step back down. Or and is it like one. a... No, well, there is, that would be a progression, but with that, oh, okay. at the moment, we'll just go one step at a time moving forward. Rich is <laughs> running here, sprinting. <laughs> so up. That's it, and then study down. And I find numbers with this oh, yeah, in that's and around way about harder. 6 to 12. Yeah, it's that explosiveness. It's helping us hold on to the bike and have a yeah. solid grip when anything's coming your way. Yeah. Pumping, pushing through things. This explosiveness is really useful and transferable to when you're on the mountain bike. And I noticed when I went a little bit ahead of myself there, the back starts to arch a little bit. So if you feel your back starting to to bow a little bit. Absolutely. Take it back a notch, right? Yeah, you don't. You want to have a nice straight line with the body, and you don't, whenever you're push-upping, if it starts to look like this, you're coming uh, up. Oh, yeah. You've, the you've old worm. The that's you're the doing one. the worm down there, that's buddy. That's floor moves. <laughs> <laughs> you're losing integrity in the movement. We want to keep a nice straight line from head to toe. Cool. Solid. Right, upper body games. Let's look. Core. Core. Beauty. Core, blimey. Right, Rich. <laughs> This is a plank pull through. So, we're going to go into a tall plank position. You've got your shoulders stacked above your wrists. And then, as Rich is, you're just gently pulling the dumbbell, it can be a kettlebell as well, across your body. Don't pull it too far because you'll have further to reach. It's just from one side to the other. With Rich's setup, he's quite narrow with his hands and then wide with his feet. What you're not looking for is your hips to pop up. That's not okay. And then rotating too much. Ah, uh -huh. as exactly. As Rich is doing, he's keeping nice and stable. This is transferable to mountain biking because you're on, again, your hands 
and your contact point, your feet, and you're working your core. And in these tricky positions, it's helping you build up the strength to stay on your bike and stay solid. To make that harder, if I'd pulled or pushed or pulled, whatever you want to call it, the weight further through, that makes it harder, right? 100%. So that's so how you can adapt you it. Go, that's going to make it more difficult or you just increase the load. So essentially, if you've got like a 14 kg dumbbell, yeah. which is quite heavy, that's, that's decent going rich, you would just Grr. add more load onto it. Okay, nice. And yeah, I mean, I did notice as I pushed or pulled it through further, I then had to reach further to get it, trying to hold more stability. Yeah. Nice. nice. Okay, Good cool. Work, great, um, great core workout there. Let's do another core workout, okay. actually. Yeah, absolutely. So this is where you do need a gym and the gym equipment. You can get these and have them at home, but it's useful to have a gym set up. Oh, it makes it a little bit easier. So what we're going to do is a pal-off press. A so what, sorry? Say a that again. pal-off press. Pal-off? Pal-off. 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 So we're going to start Ooh. from our feet. Again, like most of the exercises, work from the bottom up. We're going to have soft knees, tuck your pelvis under, squeeze your glutes, bring the band across, keep your elbows tucked in. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Rib cage down, and we're going to push across and then back. This band is creating instability, which you have loads when you're riding over Too different right. terrain. It makes it very difficult. And so what we're trying to do is increase our strength when we're in an unstable environment. So back and forth like this. And then once you've done a certain rep range, twist around, Rich, and you'll come back okay, and marry okay. it the other side. All right. All right, let's give her a whirl. So we're going to go for the pile off press. And it, sort of just go through this. So like tension when it's across. Sure. So I don't want to be like fighting it, right? Okay, step across a bit more. Let's give oh, you a bit of a challenge. Slight like okay. bend in the knees and then tuck your pelvis under so you squeeze your glutes. Gotcha. And, and then stand up a bit tall because you're bending from your knees. That's it there. Yeah. And well, let's just... say rib cage down. It's down and your abs just compressed together. Elbows tucked in and we're just going to push forwards. Yeah, yeah so I can feel I'm having to like tighten my core because otherwise I'd be like... Pulling over. That band with the load over there is wanting to take Rich that way. Yeah, definitely. So he's just trying to stay in a nice straight line and it's a steady tempo. It's not rushed. And, and what? So I'm just basically sort of going sternum again, Absolutely. level out. So we're just going to come to the chest and we're going to push out. Not too high though, so we want it to come well, down just a little you. bit. You're real small. <laughs> See what I've got to work with? <laughs> to here. Lovely, right. that's nice. I'll see you on the and other side of mine. And then around. About there? Yeah, that's Core perfect. In. Nice. Excellent. And okay. if you want a progression, which Rich might do because he's a pro, <laughs> you can add one of these plates over the top of the band. Got on. Let's have your fingers. What? Okay, hold on to it for me. What, through there, like that? Now hold on to it as you were, with your hands. Let go of that. Okay, so what we're going to do, oh. as I was saying, we're trying to increase the instability oh, and disgusting. make it more difficult. So, Rich, as you start doing this, please, oh. we're just going to give it a little bit of a bounce, and that's wanting to pull him all over the place. So yeah, his right. core is working overtime, trying to stay in position. So, as the annoying friend, I'm just going to give it a little <laughs> nudge. <laughs> I can really feel that's really good. I can really and feel again. it, especially trying to... So you're locking down, you're trying to keep this in oh the same position. And on a long ride, so much harder. trying to have this long, this, this position like is actually quite difficult, especially when you're starting to fatigue. So if we can build up in, in the gym endurance doing this, yeah. it's going to help for those rides. As soon as you started bouncing that, I was like, oh, yeah, that's well come. There you go. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> good one, good one. All right. Lovely. That's the next exercise. Here, son, I hear it's time for one of the farmer's carries, isn't it? It is a farmer's carry. <laughs> right, what are we doing here? We're in the right place for this. Okay, so we've got a farmer's carry, which is quite a straightforward exercise in terms of what we need. Kettlebells or dumbbells, and we're loading Rich up. He's going to keep his arms long. He's not going to shrug up into his traps just there. That's not the idea. And just have a steady walk to the end of the track. It's a heel to toe action. Try not to wobble and move side to side too much. If he is doing that, the load is too much. So it's just steady. With this, what we're doing is building overall strength and also grip strength, which as you can imagine on a mountain bike, is pretty important. How are we looking, buddy? You're looking good, Rich. Go down to the bottom, and then if you can turn back around and give us a smile. There. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I tell you what, walk with me, Carl, walk with me. So we're doing a weight on each side, yes. but we could do a kettlebell on each, so, uh, like singular, right? Let me just take this off you. Huh. And now you are doing a briefcase carry. Okay. So ah, yeah. with this, Rich's body is going to be getting pulled to the left and he's just trying to keep himself upright and neutral, which is working one side of the body a little bit more predominantly than when you're carrying two. 
So you would do, say, less 10 meters one way in one hand, and then switch over and 10 on the other side. With this, when you've got a weight on one side over the other, I just don't want to see you walking like this. It's got to be upright, otherwise the weight is too heavy. And we should say, the advantage, there are advantages to doing a briefcase carry over a farmer's carry, right? It just... Yeah because obviously you're working each side almost independently, it just takes longer to do. Yeah, absolutely, it takes a little bit longer, but also we should break the body down into single body parts as well. You don't always have to train both your legs at the same time. You can do a lunge, so it's one side over the other. Yeah. And it just sometimes helps us concentrate. So if I'm focusing on just this side, I know it's just that side that I can concentrate, and it just makes it a little bit easier in terms of building that connection yeah. with the body. But it is a different stimulus, so they are slightly different exercises, but with the same kit. So we actually, that, I want to carry on that point quickly, because you raise a good point how you can isolate one side or one yeah. leg. This is obviously really good if you're coming back from an injury or something like 100%. that. So if you've bust up a leg, a knee or whatever, yeah. and you need to work out that it's particular so leg, yeah. I, you know, like we yeah. can, you can isolate that. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, will, we are going to get injuries as mountain bikers. It's going to be a given. So it might be a case that we've got a lower back pain or something on one particular leg, and we do have to isolate it. So where we are showing you things where you do both hands or both legs at the same time, there's quite often a single body parted movement variation or regression. Cool. <laughs> Grip strength, go! <gasps> <laughs> I want to push a sled around. Right. Right, Carl, you look comfortable. Why? I'm well happy here. So what we're going to do now is the sledge. It's typically something that we might do towards the end of a session. It's very good for your lower body strength and power and also a bit of upper body as well. So with this, it's trying to move the sledge at a steady pace down to the bottom of the track. Come on you then. want to get down nice and low, yeah. as Rich is here. Let's mirror each other. Down nice and low, bring your shoulders in, and it's similar to a scrum position. And with this, we're just driving backwards, if I come up too much and drive, my power's going up there. So I you want to keep like, down nice and low. Instead of lifting it, you want to be driving. Absolutely, nice and low just there. Hop aboard then, So son. I'm going to be the load. Rich is going to just gently push me down. And with this, we're going to get the heart rate up a little bit. <laughs> we are Rich so loves. lazy. I am a little bit. And like I say, this is building strength and power in the lower body and also as well with the core and upper body there. It's a very good all-round finisher to do when you've done your session. And what sort of rep should we be doing on this, mate? What on sort this, of distance? I think it's going to need to be in around 40 metres, Rich. So if you can go to meters. the other side, please. 40 metres? How far is this? Is that 10? This is 5 metres. Get on, He's that's 5 metres. making meters. such a meal of it all. 40 metres. So keep those knees pulling up high and a big stride. That's it. Oh, I nearly run over a rower. Watch out. He hasn't got a licence for this. <laughs> Lethal. Job done. Good, Rich. Excellent. I tell you, that is a workout. It that's is. Like, so, cardio-wise, that's one of the hardest ones as well. Yeah, we don't always need to jump on a bike, skier, or anything like that to get our heart rate up. This sledge is a really good tick box exercise for lots of different parts of your body. Getting your heart rate up Oof, and building yeah. strength and power. So it can be used quite frequently. And I think also it just mixes up your training. It can be quite kind of boring just going onto a bit of cardio kit when you've got something like this that you can just train and have a bit of fun on as well. Definitely. Okay. Let's quickly, I want to overview, like what sort of reps and sets should people be doing? Yeah, I'm going to keep it real simple for you. Typically for us guys when we're mountain biking, we just need to go round about 6 to 12 reps. And I think between 3 and 4 sets is fine. And with our training, if we look at doing around about 2 to 3 sessions a week, that's more than enough. Um, Weight-wise? Weight-wise, I would log your weights. Just keep a log of your heaviest weight and the amount of reps that you do, and then just see how you get on coming back to it the following week. We're looking to progressively overload, but we don't have to do that all yeah, the time. Right. It could be by doing more sets and more reps. But just to keep it simple, just make us a, a rough, because we've only picked some major exercises here. Yeah, yeah, too right. Just keep a rough note in your notes, just jot something down and just figure out what's right for you because what I may lift might be different to you. Yeah, you can't um, lift my weights. It's, uh, you, well, you can't ride like I can. Ah! So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, bounce. It's a very, it's, it's case dependent and you should always start out light, get a feel for it and then build yourself up as your technique and your confidence improves. And do you know what I'd say is like, if you are brand new to the gym, don't even bother putting weights on. No. Like you get, can lift get with the, a barbell. It's yeah, fine. just use the yeah. bars and get the technique. Yeah. It's, it's really important, isn't it, to get it the technique is, yeah. right before yeah. you. You don't start just go weights. do a black run without scouting it out. There's, do you know what I mean? There's lots of yeah. like things that we can do in here where it can go wrong. So either ask a professional and just think, you know, about being patient with it. You've got time to build it up, and if you're new to it you've got loads of time and you still will see progression even in your first few sessions from when you start out. Yeah. Just, and just be patient. 
cool down? Cool down, yeah. Typically yeah. with a cool down, what we want to do is just find a little bit of space. So, Rich, if you just come this way oh. with me. Follow us. Follow us. Oh, I like that pushing one. It's all right. The sled. sled. I would get you doing that if you asked me to write you something. So I think it's That's a... That's why I don't ask you, mate. No, I know. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we're just going to go into a child's pose. So we're going to go hands out in front of us, and we're just going to go wide with our knees. Just gently push your hips back and head Aww. down to the floor. Yeah. You're a bit creaky. <laughs> <laughs> and what I want you to do is to take in a deep breath. Yeah. And then just gently breathe out. When you hold your breath, it makes the stretch much harder to achieve. And if you need to progress it, we're just going to go up onto our fingertips Ooh. and then just push your chest down towards the floor and you'll feel a bigger stretch in your back. Yeah, I see. Once you've done that for about 10 seconds, what I want you to do is walk your hands over to one side and then we're just going to bring oh, your other arm over to the side and then just repeat. So just take in a deep breath, gently exhale. Okay. And if you need to make it more difficult, again, just pop up onto your hand and then push your face towards the floor. Oh, I see what you mean. And then what, walk the other way? And then we'll just go middle, and then over to the other side. And then just push again, hips going back to the room, and then face towards the floor. And then 10 seconds. Nice, and I want a quick question, because I've always wondered this after exercise, static stretching after exercise. It's very case dependent, but I would say with what we're doing, a gentle cool down to let your heart rate go down and just stretch in this position like this would be sufficient. Okay. Yeah, you, you don't need, it's not a mandatory thing that you have to do static stretches afterwards. Nice. Definitely don't do them before the session when you're warming up. Um, I don't think you should do it if you're going out cycling and doing static st stretches either. Do a mobile movement that's dynamic, like a world's great stretch like we did at the beginning. Cool, well buddy, thank you very much for having me in the gym. It's always good job. to see you, mate. Oh, the strength! <laughs> <laughs> the, hopefully these exercises will help you get fitter, faster, stronger have more fun over the winter and uh, well let us know how you get on and um, thanks for watching eh thank you very much